In this video, I'll explain three types of caches that you can use in your backend application to improve the performance. If you're interested, stay tuned. What's going on, guys? My name is Hussein, and I discuss backend engineering in this channel mainly. And if you're interested in this stuff, uh, check out the other content on this channel, subscribe, hit that like button, and let's just jump into it. So the idea of introducing a caching mechanism or caching layer in your app is because the mechanism or the cost of obtaining a certain amount of data is costly, is high, you want to introduce a backup fast access so you don't have to go every time through the slow storage. And that could be in case of a database disk, right? Whether this is hard drive or SSD and you want to replace it with memory or in case of CPU, the CPU builder build the cache so that memory, they want to avoid memory access because to them, memory access is slower than actual, actual register caching layer in the CPU. So we want the goal of having a cache is to avoid the extra cost of going to obtain certain information. So that's caching. So the first type of caching is called a spatial cache. And think of a spatial cache as a locality-based cache. That means, hey, you're going to the disk and you are pulling a certain block of data. A spatial cache is thinking, the app will think, says, hey, since I am already took the hit and did that IO, might as well let me get the nearby blocks because I am predicting that a future request will need this spatially located blocks or spatially located data. So that's called spatial cache. So that means if I'm going there, I might as well just pull this stuff so that I already took the head. Let me pull nearby located data so that in future requests, if they requested this data, they can benefit of this. Uh, usually one example I, I'd like to take is like, if I am assembling a table from Ikea, right? And, and, and I am assembling it upstairs and all my equipments are downstairs, right? And, uh, all of a sudden, I need a screwdriver. So I go down and pick up a screwdriver and go up. And then while working, oh, I need an Allen uh, wrench. This 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 weirdly weird thing that hexagon looking, right? The wrench. So oh, let me go down and pick up uh, pick it up again. And then uh, oh, I need a, a drill. Ah, let me go down and pick it up. So if I am smart enough and say, okay, let me look at this table now. I'm gonna need an Allen wrench, I'm gonna know a screwdriver, and I'm gonna need a drill. So let me go once downstairs, pick up all this stuff, and then work on them. So that's an idea. So the trick here is if your backend app can actually predict what is gonna need, and that's not necessarily easy by any chance, then it's gonna be useful to pull up spatially located things. So when I went back down, oh, here's the screwdriver. Since I'm on, let me get the drill it's all located spatially located so that's the idea here all right so that's the first cache spatial spatial cache the second type of cache is called temporal cache and that's related to time so uh, most most frequently used here is i am i went there and i pulled a piece of data okay and now i cached it and now you start caching other pieces of data if i asked for a certain piece of data that is available in my cache then the 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 most frequent access data are getting hot in the cache they are not discarded so that's called also a least recently used cache where where the least recently used cache are getting thrown away while the most recently used cache is getting bubbled up right so that's that's the idea of a uh, a temporal cache. So if you're using a piece of data a lot, then you're probably going to use it in the future. So you keep it fresh in, in the cache because the cache is going to be only limited, right? It's not going to be infinite. Otherwise, our all problems will be solved, right? <laughs> so that's that's uh, that's one approach uh, actually the CPU uses where L1 cache, L2 cache, L3 cache, where uh, this is actually a temporal cache where if if it's a if it's frequently asked it's going to jump to the faster cache i forgot which the faster cache is the l1 or 3 
it's going to pass to the faster cache, the, the smaller one, which is the faster axis. If it's not frequently used, going to bump them down all the way down. So that's essentially the second type, temporal. So the third type of caching is called distributed caching, which is a combination of both. But the, the trick here is you need to keep, uh, to keep cache in sync with the main data store. And uh, uh, most popular here is Redis, right? You, you have a central cache Redis or memcached. And now when you, when you want to read a piece of information, your cache is empty, you go to the disk and you pull a piece of info and then you populate the cache with it. So next time, if you want to read an information, you put ask Redis or ask, ask your distributed cache, hey, do I have this information? Uh, well, yes, I do. Here it is. Uh, no, I don't go to the disk because, yeah, you don't have it, but the, the, the disk must have it, right? So now it go to the disk and then pull it. And here's where it gets really tricky because keeping the cache in sync with the main data store is one of the hardest problems that back-end engineers face and, and front-end engineers if, you, they, if they have some similar cache in the front-end. So that, that's why there are two types of caching here and I'm going to make another dedicated video for this. So this is especially when you're actually trying to write to disk and update your cache and keeping this cache in sync. Uh, so two methods so far we know about. Uh, there is one called write through cache where if you want to update your data store, you first do it in the cache itself. Ah, look at this. So you update your cache and synchronously block the client that is writing to write also to the to the IO uh, disk immediately, right? So there are many implementation AWS doing differently. Uh, you can do it differently. So I, I know AWS have like a, a, a something called um, I think set aside or something like that, where the application is aware of both, right? Just the write through cache where the app writes to the cache and turn it on and also write to the data store at the same time. So the app is aware. There is another type of write through cache where you write to Redis or you write to this cache and you also synchronously block, but the cache turn around and actually writes to the disk. So it's, it's almost, it is a true write through cache. So these this is the first type of write through cache, which is which is kind of nice because now if you look, if you want to query, you always query the cache, and you can guarantee almost that the cache are is gonna have all your data, right? Because all the latest data. The, uh, the other type of the distributed cache that is called write back cache, which is almost asynchronous. So you write cache, you write to the cache, and then that's it. You trust that the cache you, you're done immediately. The the cache will asynchronously write back to, to the data store. A write back cache is way more complex to implement. That's the second type where essentially you're going to write always to the cache, but once you write to the cache, you are essentially done. However, it's the cache store job to mark these uh, pages or, or data that you just written in the cache as dirty, as being edited and now the cache is responsible to take all these dirty pages and then flush them the, back to the disk now there are lo lots of implementation where how can you guarantee persistence in this model because if you write to the cache and the cache destroyed in memory that's a big problem you can you just lost one of the asset properties which is durability it's not durable with the right back right so, so that, that's one problem again i'm not going to go into details about these two types i'm going to dedicate a different videos uh, specifically designed for to to talk about distributed caching and all this limitation and all that stuff all right guys hope you learned some a few things of, in this video if you like this video hit a, hit a like and i'm going to see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye